Uh, this slide about the price intervention uh, process um, actually has sentiment for me. Back uh, in my in the 70s, I worked for a Wheeler dealer who was building a chain of primarily printing paper distribution companies in the Midwest, and we'd have uh, annual management meeting sessions, and he would bring in educational resources. And so back in about 1975, maybe, he brought in Ken Blanchard before Ken Blanchard was the one-minute manager and, and got famous. And the next year, on a recommendation from Ken, we brought in a, a fellow named Robert Lorber and, a, and another colleague, and they talked about the price model, but it was for how to be a better coach. So it sort of had an upside, let's coach you along uh, to a higher level, uh, you know, approach to it. Uh, later, in the early 80s, when I was doing a, a big turnaround of a, of a distribution company, I actually repurposed price. And you'll see I put a little footnote here because you can go learn about Lorber's upside opportunity uh, in his book, uh, Putting the One-Minute Manager to Work, which he co-authored with Ken Blanchard. But, you know, that came out in 1989. You can probably get it Amazon used books for a penny kind of thing. Um, but the idea is, is that uh, when Charlie Coaster, sort of uh, on his monthly uh, goal planning, mastery growth reporting is just flailing, we'd sort of say, all right, Charlie, what we're going to do is P is for pinpoint. We're going to sort of say, here's where you are. Here's where you're not going. So we have a gap. You're not, you're not moving along like you're supposed to. And the deal is that we have lots of privileges in our new environment here, but we, you have accountability and responsibility and you're, you're dropping the ball. So let's agree on what your current baseline is versus what's acceptable or average and what, what we want you to do. And if you need some, some concrete illustration with Tony the Tiger's permission, here's Tony's uh, story and what he's been doing for the last three to six months. So now we have to sort of say, all right, how are we going to measure on an ongoing basis whether you start to get off your baseline and start growing up a mastery curve or not? Um, the I stands for involved. What are you and I both going to do differently? In other words, we can't keep doing what we're doing because we'll keep getting what we're getting. What are we going to do differently? And maybe if we looked at a kinetic chain and, and made sure as a checklist are all the elements there, I'm obviously the leader and what's our strategy and our systems and you're number four, the employee, and what are the skills you're trying to learn, et cetera. Um, what, are, what are we both going to do to help you, in a sense, create a new different habit, if you will, to start to close the gap? Um, I will be available as needed to, you know, help you coach, uh, tutor you, et cetera, to help you get to a, a higher level, whatever you're trying to do. And then now that we've started this process, every two weeks, we will evaluate how you're doing. And, you know, when we summarize that, it'll be very quick, 5, 10, 15 minutes maybe, uh, we'll write something up and you'll sign it uh, so that we'll have a record of how we're doing. Uh, and then we'll go back to P and start all over again. So it's an iterative cycle until you get on the path and, and start moving along or you don't. Um, now, if somebody ultimately has to be let go of the company, you have to make sure that there is objective measurable evidence and they've self-signed it. <laughs> now, this doesn't mean that they're not going to call up in the state of California, the law firm Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, you know, with 800 billboards saying, have you been unfairly let go? And they're going to harass you for some sort of settlement. They're going to split with the guy, knowing, you know, that you've got a case, deal with it. But the point is, is that, you know, there's no additional upside beyond just legal harassment that comes out of this. But more importantly, if Charlie Coaster has any friends, the key is, is that they would be able to say, as a jury, sitting here on the side, watching what's going on, knowing that Charlie's been priced, I think that there was total due process. It was fair, and in fact, the company bent over backwards to give Charlie more help than maybe they should have. And the truth of the matter is, I like Charlie as a, as a person, but the truth, as a member of the team, and I'm tied in to peer-based numbers and, and peer-based Delta PBIT gain-sharing bonuses, he's dragging the team and me down. And I, you know what? I, I, I can't afford to carry him along. Uh, so those are some key you know, guidelines that sort of over, 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 provide oversight for the price process. That's it. Thank you.